What's going on everyone and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. Now continuing on with our Indie Comics Weekend, I got something new for you guys. And I'm really interested to see where this story is going. Now today's video is covering Nothing Man issue number one from Hyperverse Comics. Now all the links for the, the comic shop and the comic book will be down in the description to buy it. Check out all the other lines that they have because they do have an extensive line. I believe they're running into uh, issue number five of Nothing Man. And so we're going to be covering all issues of this. They also have a Kickstarter going on right now. I'll leave a link down in the description for that as well. That Kickstarter is for The Last Owling, issue number one. Nothing Man was created by John Rhodes. Story is by John Rhodes and N.S. Kane. Pencils and letter are by John Rhodes as well. So it's seeming like John Rhodes, you know, he's done most of this comic. He's had some help from individuals like Steve Sprayson and so on and so forth. But for the most part, he's done most of the, the heavy work on, on this comic himself, which is really awesome to see. It's really, it's really awesome to see a creator do so many different things on his own comic. But with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, so getting into this breakdown, we're met with a Predator drone, and it's making its way somewhere northeastern in the United States. And we have what appears to be a tactical team, a tactical team moving in on a target. And these guys seem to be no joke. They, they look like the real deal. And they seem to have acquired their target, a man, a blonde man with long hair and a long beard, sitting naked in the snow. Not knowing where he is, or, or really who he is, he just knows that he's not alone out in this snowy woodland. And this is when the tactical team makes their move. They descend upon the blonde man, and they immediately start opening fire. Now the naked man realizing that this is a threat, we see him run. And we don't see him just normally run, we see him run like a bulldozer through the trees, what appears to be superhuman speed and just like that they lost contact they have no idea where he went and so they decide to bring out their kind of secret weapon a woman who can control fire and she goes by the name of firecracker and really what they want her to do is kind of burn everything in the surrounding area and find his tracks because if there's no snow then he can easily be drawn out or at least that's the assumption here. But what they don't realize is that he's already long gone. He, he's far away from this place. And he's making his way to what looks like a little cabin with billowing smoke coming from a chimney. And as he approaches this house, he asks for help. And we see inside a young woman doing dishes only to have a giant naked man standing outside of her window in what appears to be a, a snowstorm. And she rushes outside to see the man collapsed in the snow. Rushing back inside, she grabs a sheet, using it as a makeshift litter or, or object to carry him with. She drags him inside. Now back with our tactical team, Firecracker was really ineffective. They really didn't do anything but burn some trees around them and they still weren't able to find any kind of trace or tracking. And so without wasting any time, they, they need to pick up the tracks. They need to go find it somewhere. And it's not going to be in this location where they're sitting at now. Now while this is all happening, Firecracker really seems to be some kind of prisoner. And it seems more or less that she's ready to break out at any minute. And the commando or trooper is trying to keep her on a short leash. Now three days later, we pick back up in the cabin. And this woman, she introduces herself as Diana. But the blonde man, the, the blonde naked man that was in the snow, he doesn't, he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't even remember his name. But she tells him to kind of, you know, take it slow. You know, get yourself dressed, come downstairs, have some coffee, and we'll discuss it further. And that's exactly what happens. And as they get further into their conversation, we learn a few things here. We learn, one, that he believed it was October, but it's actually January. So he's missing a good three or four months where he doesn't remember anything. But he still doesn't remember exactly what his own name is, or, or where he's from, or anything like that. And on the news, we see something. We see a breaking news story from Paradise City. Because right now, Paradise City is under siege. It's under siege because of something called hybrids. Which is more or less a, a, a kind of X-Men mutants thing. 
a shift in human DNA. And right now there's a struggle between hybrids and soldiers. And all civilians are being evacuated. Now our blonde man, he really, he's just like, what's going on? Like, why are they attacking a city? Like, are we at war? Like, what, what's happening? And Diana tells him, you know, this is what happens when you lose leadership. That place used to be a paradise, but now it's just a, a perverted hub for hybrids with drunk that are drunk on power. That all of these hybrids want to kind of flex. They want to do a show of power more or less. Because they want to get him out of the city. And when she says him, she means Hyperus. And this is when he is shown a, a newspaper article with Hyperus's picture on it. He seems to be the, the super all, above all superhero. But when the blonde man is shown a picture, he has a flashback. Or a memory. He's not sure what this is. But he sees someone getting bullied. His brother is bullying somebody here. It appears to be somebody that's not a hybrid. And it's a really weird sequence of events that we're shown here. You know, we're, we're also shown a an infant girl. We're shown an individual named Insidious. And these guys appear to be brothers. Kind of opposites of one another. And so you have Hyperus and Insidious. Maybe it's like a good and evil thing that we're, we have going on here. It doesn't really dive too far into exactly what's happening. Which I enjoy. I, I want that surprise to remain that. I don't want to exactly know the whole story yet. Especially when he still has amnesia. I'm sure he ties into it in some, some great fashion. But as these memories pass, his head just feels wonky. And he almost falls over. And his nose starts to bleed. And as he's bleeding, he looks down at his hand. And realizes that, you know, he, he really does need to, like, sit down and take it easy. Because he's pushing himself too far too quickly. And then we get a glimpse at Paradise City. At the Freedom Tower. Current home of the Brotherhood of Hybrids. And what we see here is a group of individuals. One named Shard, another named Sona. One Cherry Bomb, another Storm Child. And all of these individuals are working against humans. They're the ones that have occupied this city. They're the ones causing all of this turmoil. They're the ones trying to have a show of force against all the forces that oppose them. And it looks like they're about to do some kind of mission. They're going to mess some stuff up. And whoever they're going for, it can't be good. And this is when we're taken to the Joint Forces Coalition Operations Control Center in the Colorado Mountains. And inside this mountain, we're introduced to, to a few individuals. Some high-ranking military individuals, one being General Bishop and the other being Gunnar Williams. Now, there, be, there seems to be some kind of issue because they lost somebody, but they, they don't really specify on who was lost at this point. So we can only speculate. But as the story progresses further along, we're learning what's happening here. As that these individuals are the ones mounting the, the offensive against the hybrids in Paradise, Paradise City. Now, Williams is here because of her brilliance that she's displayed in cybernetics and hybridology. Now, at first, she's really confused. She doesn't understand exactly what, what she's being asked here to do. But what she's being asked is to create the greatest weapon ever built. Under the control of the Coalition, they have a woman named Chaotica. And from what they say, she appears to be some kind of living god. And so somehow, some way, they're going to use her and whatever ability she has to be able to create some kind of weapon, something to fight back against the hybrids, and give humans a, a kind of even playing field when it comes to the battlefield. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I, I really did enjoy this. This was a lot of fun. Now, it definitely left a lot of mystery out there. We don't we don't know a whole lot about this world, but I'm really interested in finding out exactly who Nothing Man is, or if he ever finds out himself. His name is Nothing Man, so maybe maybe that's the name he goes with after not being able to to remember or the amnesia not going away, whatever the case may be. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, make sure you support the Kickstarter. The link is down in the description. Support the Kickstarter. Support the Kickstarter. Support the Kickstarter. Be sure to go check out the rest of their content that they have coming out from their, their line. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next video.